Hi, I'm Rick from Marion the Models, DJI dealer from the UK and a bricks and mortar model shop for over 40 years. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to fit a Chinese aftermarket brushless gimbal to the DJI Phantom 1, but this will also apply to the Phantom 2 uh, and any other multi-rotor as it is a plug and play device. This is a gimbal that we will be fitting, which I show you here. As you can see, it's a good, good quality gimbal, moves very well, covers the roll axis and the pitching axis, but you will also have the uh, pitching control, so you can tilt that right down or basically back up again. And I'll be showing you how to program this in the uh, uh, Phantom NASA Assistant, but this would also apply to the NASA Assistant as well if you were running just a NASA Lite or a NASA V2. Okay, so first of all, we'll go through what you're going to get with your gimbal in the pack. So first thing you will get is obviously the gimbal itself. Designed specifically for the GoPro 3 or 3 Plus. Sadly, unfortunately, because the bracket holds the uh, GoPro in, it, it won't take any of the earlier GoPros. Yeah, you also get is the top half of the mounting, which will be going on there. You get two sets of rubber balls. Uh, strangely enough, it actually looks like they actually give you proper DJI ones. So you get white ones and grey ones. I found that the white ones seem to work the best, but certainly if you feel you're getting a bit of uh, jello or something or vibration coming through in your video, you could actually try these rubbers or certainly any other rubbers. Uh, you also get, uh, this is basically the comms cable. This is what takes the, uh, this is what makes the, the tilt function work. So this takes a signal from the gimbal's controller into the flight controller to allow you to tilt or roll the gimbal. You don't need as many cables as these. We're actually going to be using one or two. And then the other part you have is the wiring harness for the gimbal itself. To make it plug and play, what they do is they put these sort of remote cables on. So you've got one that's designed just to go into a, a, a three uh, cell LiPo battery. So if you were building like a 450, which has all got external stuff, this would make it quite easy to fit. So that is where your battery goes in that powers the gimbal. However, that could be cut off and actually hardwired into the model. Then this one here is, uh, as you can see, these kind of look like servo pins. And these are what takes the signal from the gimbal to the freight controller. It will be going from here. So I'll be running a cable from the signal of these pins uh, to the actual uh, Phantom flight controller and I'll also obviously show you how to set that up in the assist assistant uh, software so you can actually tilt them up and down. A couple of tools that are handy, knife, two mil driver for taking the body apart, that's I think it's a one and a half mil, what that's for is the clamp that holds the GoPro in has a small Allen screw in there and also a Phillips screwdriver also for taking the body apart. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is actually take the body shell apart. Now, if you have actually already got your uh, red stickers on, best thing to do, I find, you can either peel them off or actually I just slice them. And that way, if you need to get in and out of your body shell, you can do that quite easily. So we just slice them across like that on that side. There. Flip her over. Find the join. What you're doing, you're running the, mo the modeling knife down the actual join between the two halves. So, your knife, if you have it in that groove, it should cut nicely. Now that that's done, uh, you need to basically take all the screws out to take the body shell off. So, the ones you're taking out, now you'll notice I'm actually missing uh, two screws here already. What it is, is this is actually a customer's model that I'm fitting this gimbal for. So, I've taken the opportunity to do the video. But he actually had prop guards fitted, so to make it obviously a lot easier to uh, manoeuvre on the table, I've actually taken the prop guards off, which exposed two of the screws. However, the other two, they get left, otherwise your motors will fall out. So the screws you're going to be taking out, small Phillips one on the end there, and these ones. Now this Phillips screw here is um, it's an unusual size, so you've got to make sure you get a screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver that fits it really well, otherwise these commonly get chewed up. Um, the one that I feel seems to work very well is this one here, which is a CK screwdriver and its part number is 4812. If you can get one of those, very handy for doing the Phantom. So what I'll do, I will take the screws out of one corner. So 
bit of pressure on that and on the screw. Take that one out and then two mil Allen driver do the rest. One two three. There we go. So you want to do on that leg, spin it round that leg, that leg, that leg. Okay, so now I've got all the screws out, the body shell actually is ready to split. However, before we do that, I'm just going to prepare the gimbal for fitting. So what we need, we'll need the gimbal and we'll need this adapter plate. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to prep the adapter plate first. We're going to put the little rubbers in it. So if you take the rubbers out, so basically what you want to do is just pinch the rubber and then just squeeze it into the hole like that. Go around all four like that, like that. And then that basically that is now ready for mounting. Now if we slide the Phantom back into shot and then we can look to see where this is going to mount. Now, if I put that on, you'll actually see all the mounting rubbers now starting to uh, line up. Now, before I put this on, what I'm going to do is, um, the problem you sometimes get with brushless gimbals, if you have a bit of a crash, uh, the gimbal can actually pop off the rubbers. So what would happen is, this would be mounted on there, which is all cool, but you have a crash, it pops off its, get it off its rubbers, flies off, then all these cables just all get ripped out and actually I, with the prototype one actually I didn't do what I'm about to show you and I ended up actually ripping all my cables out and having to rewire the whole thing again. You'll get a couple of these little 2 mil Allen screws, uh, it's actually 3 mil I think they are. So we want to screw them on, so we just pop our screws in like that. Now it does tend to actually tighten down on these rubbers, so you don't have to go mad, but just nick them up there. And then the other one at the front. And that's that. Now, I'm just going to move that aside now, because the next thing we're going to do actually, is I'm going to prepare the cable. Now, handily, handy enough, uh, the, what the manufacturers have done of the gimbal is they have put this uh, connector on here which is handy because it means you can now actually disconnect this. This can actually all go inside the model and this would actually allow you to tuck that up through the undercarriage leg. So what we're going to do next is, in fact, we're going to mount the gimbal actually onto the Phantom. Now what we do is, now I'm trying to work at a funny angle, so that's how the gimbal's going to go. So what you have to do is just lay it on top of the rubbers and as you did before, just kind of pinch and push until the rubbers kind of go into the bag. So I don't know if you can see that one in shot. Just kind of push it around, just work your way around and then it should, you should be able to get it all to come through. Just give it a wee pick like that. And then move that out of the way. Do this one. Like that. And like that. So now the gimbal is actually properly mounted onto your Phantom. Okay, next job we're going to do is we're going to run the cable into the Phantom. So the first thing you actually have to do is you'll have our little blank and rubber here. So we're going to actually run it up that way. So we actually just push that in and it will fall inside the Phantom. Next thing to do, if you just get that connector and then just kind of bend it over at 90 degrees and then poke it into the hole. Now, you're, as on the Phantom 1, these holes are actually a little bit tighter. You may need to give it a little prod. Be careful of the wiring because the last thing you want to do is damage any of that. And that will basically pop through. And then if we flip the Phantom over. Just going 
Let's zoom out a bit there. Look at that. We'll take the body shell off and then we will be greeted with this connector on the inside, like that. And now we'll be ready for uh, wiring it all up with the adapter. Okay, now that we've uh, routed this cable up inside the uh, Phantom, you can now take the adapter board and basically that will just plug back into there. Okay, right now I've actually already plugged these two cables in. So on that bunch of cables you got, if you just split two off, now you actually only really need one, but I'm going to plug in two just in case and then I'll, I'll show you why later. So it doesn't matter which ones, but if you take the same colours I've got probably make it a little bit easier for you but if you look at the adapter as you can see you've got two sets now the one on you'll actually very closely it's marked here it actually says pitch there so pitch is basically the one that we want and then the bottom pin is the actual signal so the way it works with one of these servo connectors is you would have positive in the middle negative at the top and signal at the bottom so we want to use the signal wire but as I say the roll axis is on the other side so if you plug the second cable in the orange one this allow you to make independent control over the axis uh, sorry over the roll now you won't have actual control while you fly over the roll however if for any reason the gimbal doesn't sit entirely level you can use the roll axis to do a very very fine trimming of it so if we put the two on there so once you've done that if you go to your actual controller I'll just spin that around there uh, you will see where I've plugged it in now this is into uh, F1 and F2 of the flight controller so pitch which is the yellow wire will go into the bottom connector of the F2 port and in the orange which will be for roll if we require it or if you want to put it in will go into the F1 port. Okay, the first thing we want to do is, because this is all exposed and electrical, and we're going to have to mount it in, in inside the body, uh, the best thing to do actually is to get some electrical tape and basically go over the top of it and insulate it. If you had some big bore or heat shrink tube, then that would be even better because you could unplug it there, slip it over, uh, and then heat shrink it all nice and neat. But I'm just going to put some electrical tape around it just now. So we just put that on there like that. It's just, just, it's just simply to stop any of the pins on this. If they were to touch another component uh, inside, then you're going to get one hell of a spark, and probably, unfortunately, your phantom dropping from the skies. Let's get a little bit more tape. This will also help just secure the pins in place as well. So just use some sort of self-amalgamating tape. Just put it on there like that. Now it's going to be inside the body, so we're not going to see it, but that actually looks all right. So basically what we need to, we've got two things we need to do is, now as I was kind of saying to you earlier about regards to the actual power connection, you have a choice at this stage. You can either basically route the cable down there, so it would actually come out next to the battery connection. So when you go to fly, you would simply, you know, slide your battery in as you normally do. That would go in like that. And where you would normally have your main power connector to go in, you would just simply plug in the balance lead as well, which would give you the most easiest and plug and play option. Alternatively to that, what you could do, I'll just back that back up, um, snip the wires and you just so solder straight onto the power. Now, these two connections here are actually the powers you've got, positive and negative, so you would just simply solder those on. But obviously only do that if you're actually feeling quite confident. In this particular instance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the easy approach as in I'm just going to run that cable down inside there. Okay, you're going to need some tie wraps to do the next part because you're going to have to tidy up all the wires. Now, it's going to be inside, so it doesn't have to be super neat, but what you don't really want is you don't want everything sort of rattling about. So, probably the best thing to do, if I just probably bunch most of those cables up together, this will go on no bother. And what I'm going to do is, 
I am going to just basically stick it round there. In fact, right there, right there. So that will go around like that. Don't go mad pulling it too tightly. And then the other cable, let's have a look, see how this will go. Got plenty of slack there. We'll leave that like that and then what I'll do is I'll tie, tie wrap this around the um, the receiver connectors there so that'll stop the whole loom flying around so just nip it up like that just careful and we've got all that nice and neat we can just snip them off obviously any color of tire wrap will do but I'm a bit of a stickler so I've got green ones to match the uh, to match the actual main board so that's that in there like that and that'll actually sit there quite happy if you wanted you could probably run some more uh, electrical tape over the top Actually, I'm just going to remove this bobbin. That was the little um, the little rubber doofer that we popped out to run the master cable through. We'll actually come back to that and actually put that back in place. Okay, now before we go any further, before we put the body on, it's best to actually do all your setups first so you know exactly if you've uh, basically done it all right. So the first thing we actually need to do is you need to, um, if you haven't already done so, download the NASA Assistant or if you go into your uh, your uh, Phantom product on the DJI website you'll be able to download the Phantom Assistant which is basically just the NASA Assistant. If you are downloading it for the first time remember to download the Assistant Installer program. So there's two programs you need to install first to get the Assistant to work properly. So first thing we're going to do, obviously I've already got it so I'm just going to boot that up. You get a little warning that will come up here and saying uh, skip. So you just skip that and we get all that up. Now obviously you need to plug your Phantom uh, USB connection in so get that connected in and then we're just going to power it up now uh, The best thing to do is to actually as we've got the twin connections here uh, Plug the, the actual gimbal in first because if you don't plug the gimbal in first Then what you tend to find happens is the flight control doesn't understand what's there um, and just starts making strange beep noises So if I plug the phantom in first, you'll see what I mean so you just get that beeping noise which basically means there's an error. So what to do is you plug in the balance lead first and then and you can hear that all powers up fine. So I can actually move that out of the way now because the next thing we're going to be using is the transmitter. So just connect that OK, close that down. That's just given us a prompt about uh, software updates but the chances are your FC40 or your Phantom will be on the latest update. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to calibrate the um, the your tilt lever on your transmitter. So depending on which one you have, on this one I've got the oops, I've got this actual standard DJI one. So if you can find one of these, great, fit it on. Uh, if you have managed to get one of these, if you check out my other videos, I've done a video specifically on um, the actual tilt lever. So you can have a look at that. Uh, so, so get that fitted. And this is basically what we're going to calibrate. So the first thing we need to do is, I just move that around. Okay, so basically what we need to do, we need to calibrate the actual X1 channel, which is if I move the tilt lever on the transmitter, you'll see the X1 channel moving. So uh, we don't need to recalibrate the main controls, but we can calibrate that one. And then basically just move it backwards and forwards a couple of times. And that's just letting the uh, the flight controller know what is the proper travel of the air actual tilt lever, depending on which one you've done. If you put a rotary knob in, etc. And we just finish that. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to do the gimbal control now. So if you go into the advanced tab, uh, you'll see all the tabs along here. One of them is gimbal. Click on that. Now I've already set this one up, but I'll go through what it all does. So the first thing you need to do, gimbal switch, switch to on. Uh, the next thing you need to do, if you set uh, the pitch roll, first one max to a thousand, center to zero and minimum to zero. Uh, roll as we're not actually using a roll function these are just left as their values are however what you want to do if if need be if your gimbal doesn't sit entirely level for whatever reason 
basically putting a value in here will actually tilt the center point of the gimbal's roll. So if it's say pitching to the left, you can put a value in here, either minus or positive, to trim that out. Uh, gains, they'll already be set at 20, so you can basically set them. And then finally at the bottom, you have pitch speed. Now this is how fast the gimbal pitches, depending on your lever movement. So if you want it all nice and smooth, even if you're quite harsh on the gimbal tilt lever, I set that quite a low value. So I've set it to five, it can range up to 100. And when you're done with all that, you just basically press the return button to write it to the uh, flight controller. Now, when you first plug the gimbal in, if you find the gimbal and the camera, they're all twitching about and it's doing all crazy stuff, don't worry about it. Because until you actually switch the gimbal control on, uh, the, there'll be nothing inputting into the flight controller to tell it where to be. So don't worry about that. Okay, now with all that wired up correctly, what you should have now is a nicely tilting gimbal so that goes down and that goes up like that so what we're really left to do now is actually clip all the body shell back together now that we know it works correctly okay now that you've got your body all screwed back together uh, before we finish up I will come back to what I was talking about at the very start which was securing the gimbal on in case of an accident so what you need is a couple of tie wraps and you simply loop the tie wrap through the rubber grommet. You might need just to put a wee curve on the end of that just to stop it digging into the side of the rubber. Like that. Now, here is the key. You do not just ramp it up tight because that will stop the gimbal working properly. How you want it is, you want it so it's still quite slack. So. Just kind of pull it, uh, and there we go. See, not too slack, but it's definitely not gripping on the uh, onto the, the the rubber or the gimbal. So you do one at the front. I just put on the two, tilt that round and round and round and round, and then what I'll do, put one on the opposite side uh, at the back. So I'll just loop that one in. Hold on. There she comes, loop that through, and again just a shape there, and then just have it so it's not tight, there we go, see nice and slack, and then what you can do, you can just trim them off with a pair of snips, mine seems to have just escaped me right now. Well, that's me finished for another how-to video. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you found it useful. Certainly check out all my other uh, DJI how-to videos and setup features on all the DJI products. And certainly check out my website at marionvillemodels.com. We're a UK DJI dealer and a bricks and mortar model shop for over 40 years. If you like my videos, subscribe to them, share them on Facebook and tell your friends about them. Thanks very much and goodbye.